Wine TV. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello, everybody. Welcome to Elite Wine TV. Everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco, here for another edition of the show. All right, so um, can't see it, but I still got all the Halloween stuff over here. So uh, I'm recording this really less than a week after I recorded Halloween. Um, still have to put out another episode, but I, I had the, sh the set. I just left it up. I usually take it down, but I left it up, and I really wanted to get um, this Vine Box uh, review done. I actually have two of them now, but I'm not going to do all of them because that's like six glasses of wine and I don't want to open up six little vials. So yeah, what? Yeah. Okay. You don't know what it is yet. So we're about to, we're about to head into it, but first we're going to do a little housekeeping. And another reason why I kind of wanted to go ahead and start uh, record this today instead of wait too much longer. Um, not that I guess it matters because there's a, the future of this as a podcast. Okay. Not on YouTube, not like, through ifood.tv on the Roku box or anything like that. That that future is totally fine. It's not going anywhere. But as a podcast, is is a little bit of doubt. And um, by the time you see this, it might have been solved. So, uh, but I wanted to start getting this out on tape and to start getting people aware um, because you may have to change your viewing habits. But the upshot is. So when I produce the show, I have to upload the video to two different places. I upload to YouTube, and then iFood TV takes the um, takes the video from YouTube. They import it and they put it up on their site. So that's cool. I don't have to upload it to them. Uh, I used to, but they they offer to just basically subscribe to my YouTube feed and, and download the video that way. Um, but uh, I upload to the server. Uh, I, I own. What well, I don't know a few URLs that all point to 1337wine.com, except for videowinereviews.com. I own that also, but that is a separate entity, and that's where this video lives. Um, and it's served from the those servers, um, courtesy of Pressable. Uh, they are my they're my web hosting, my, my WordPress hosting uh, company. Uh, they're local. Uh, they've done a great job for me. Um, and I, I love everything that they do for me, but the problem is that when I upload for some reason this year, and I don't really recall ever having this big of an issue is that my, my, st my upload stall, the, the Halloween video, um, at a six K at, at a six K bit per second, uh, 6,000 kilobits per second rate. Um, I'm not going to try to get too geeky, but basically that's like, some with the minimum that you that you want for 1080p, which is how I record the show. So when you upload to try to preserve as much quality as possible, you want to be where they have a high bit rate. Um, I could I could record this in in what I'm recording now and then compress it heavily and do a lower bit rate like I used to what three four five six years ago, and I don't have a big file size. But the file size for Halloween episode was two gigabytes. It's a lot. It's a lot to upload, especially when you don't have like super fast fiber upload speeds like some other people in the country do. Um, but when I upload to YouTube, it doesn't really, nothing really, there's no problems. It just takes a long time. Usually no issues. When I upload the pressable, uh, this past year, um, things seem to stall on me, uh, using SFT, SFTP. Um, that's the only way you can do it. I, I can't like, even though they're local, my, the server who, the server that the, the computer, the little box that the videos are on is not here in San Antonio. It's like, I don't know. The last I heard it was in Chicago, but there was a little bit of a, they, they did some reorganization as to who they partner with. So I don't know where my server actually lives anymore. It may still be in Chicago, maybe somewhere else. So I can't just like drive up. They're like five minutes down the road or they used to be 
way back in the day. Um, the sir, the company that helped them was literally right down the road from me. I can't just like walk in with a thumb drive and go here. Um, so, but it stalls and I addressed it earlier in the year and it was just kind of like, well, you know, we don't really know what's going on, blah, blah, blah. So, um, so I took time off and I recorded some more episodes and I uploaded again in the last couple episodes. I, I have to babysit the computer. I have to like, wait. And it literally takes like two days to upload something that should take two to three hours. Um, so I finally said, Hey, there's something wrong. And I guess the red flag went up and they're like, Whoa, what are you doing? So I touted this a while ago that they gave me unlimited bandwidth, unlimited storage on the, uh, uh for my website. And they charged me based upon views. Um, and they actually upgraded the number of views you can get for the, for, for the level of account I have. So I, I, based upon that, I'll never ever have to worry about having to pay more money per month. I actually get a great rate. I can have five websites. It's awesome. Um, but I'm a resource hog and we went into this, at least me and a representative of the company went into this knowing full well what was going on. Now, I don't think anything happened personally to me uh, from the emails I've exchanged with, with them um, because they literally had no clue that I was using the resources I was using. But uh, the initial email was like, hey, you know, you're, you're going way over what is intended, even though it's unlimited. We all know, I won't say all we know, there are many of us who know that unlimited when it comes to data, um, whether it's your cell phone, or your internet service provider um, isn't always truly unlimited because 99% of the people will never tax the system. I'm part of that 1% um, that occasionally tax the system when it comes to my web hosting thing, when I'm uploading. And then honestly, you know, depending on how many videos are downloaded, I have no idea what what the pattern is, but it's a lot of, it's a lot of data. Um, when we're talking the numbers that I that get downloaded for the podcast, which is kind of weird because iTunes itself, I don't have a ton of subscribers. I actually have very few subscribers on iTunes itself. However, I still I I'm kind of close to my views when I was back on Blip.tv and the the our, the the feed that that uh, the podcast lives on. I'm starting to get similar numbers in viewership. So. Uh, bandwidth's going up, and uh, they, the the representative said, "You know, you're up. You're, the file size you're uploading is way more than we intend to have." And they weren't being mean to them; they were just kind of like, "Hey, is there something that we need to know?" So we've got a, a little back and forth. And uh, initially, when I wrote a post from, well, as far as you're concerned, a couple weeks ago, saying that the future of the podcast is in jeopardy, um, that I may not be able to be on iTunes, and if you're watching through that feed. Um, you'd have to watch me on YouTube or through the website or on iFood TV. Um, so initially, because I was like, well, obviously I'm, I'm using way more than I'm, I'm, they, they intend. I probably need to look elsewhere. Uh, but since then, we've had some, uh, and we'll probably between actually today and when you watch this video, we'll probably have a few more emails. But it looks like um, that post, not that it's an error, but I may not have to be as drastic as I thought I was going to have to be starting December, I mean, starting January, 2017. However, be aware. And of course, as these get updated, um, I will keep you all updated as to whether or not the planned date self-imposed change, because they did not give me any deadline or anything, um, of January, 2017 to no longer have a video podcast of, of the show. However, I did not put this in the written post. There's nothing that prevents me from having an audio podcast. A lot of people, I mean, I listen to podcasts all the time. I listen to podcasts called Security Now. They have video. I, I can't remember the last time I actually watched in, in its entirety of the, the video version of that podcast. And honestly, because it's more informational, I don't really need to watch Leo Laporte and Steve Gibson necessarily. There isn't anything really visual. Um, but this it's visual because it's nice, but uh, there is no there is no reason that you have to watch the show. You can listen to it, and it's a much smaller file size. I actually can afford that, and that's that's the point: is that 
video is expensive and to truly host it somewhere outside of Pressable, we're, we're getting close to $100 minimum per month and maybe even more depending on the popularity of, of the show and, and all that. So, and no, you can't use YouTube to be the feed. Um, don't ever, don't try to tell me you can because you can't. I've been trying for years to do it and it won't work. It never has worked actually through iTunes. You can't, you can't do it. Um, but uh, anyway, so as far as the upshot is, Pressable is actually trying to work with me um, to understand exactly what I'm doing. They've also been like, well, what about this? What about this? What about that? And of course, since I've been you know researching this for years and I kind of understand how video works on the internet, um, I have to bring them up to speed as to the what can and can't happen or you know what 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 the whole situation is because they're just not well versed in it and not, th that's not their job. So um, anyway, so we're, we're kind of going back and forth and right now it kind of looks like they're, they're saying, hey, don't really worry about it. It's, it's We just want to know what's going on because if some reason that everybody decides to download the podcast, you know, hit the feed at the same time, it potentially could strain their resources as a company um, or when they're backing up my site, um, having so much there. Uh, and when I first went over to them, I only did, I think, I think 10 episodes in the feed and I moved it up to 13. Now it's, well, now it's down to 10, I think again, or 13, but I moved it up to 26. So it's a full season. Um, I may keep it as a smaller thing and then I can also delete the, the episodes that are not required just to be kind of nice, right? Um, not nice, uh, be, be respectful, right? Considerate. That's the word I'm looking for, considerate. Because honestly, most people don't watch beyond, at least on the podcast, I can't imagine them going more than 13 episodes on a regular basis. And everything's on the website. Well, not really, because I still haven't changed all the, like from episode one to like 300. I still haven't changed the embed code to YouTube from blip.tv. But I, it's everything's on YouTube. So if somebody wants to watch episode one, for whatever reason, they can go watch it. All right, so um, so kind of an update as to what I posted. It says it'll be at least a couple weeks, um, but then again, by the time this video is posted, there's probably more emails between me, between myself and Pressable. So bottom line, nothing may change. However, don't be surprised if the next video, all the videos between now and the end of the year, I tell you, hey go watch me on YouTube, go watch me on iFood TV, your Apple TV, your Roku box, your Xbox, PlayStation, Smart TV, all of them have at least the ability to watch, and even TiVo, which is where I, I had almost all my subscribers, and now I, I, think, I think I'm getting my subscribers back on that. Um, all of them can watch my stuff on YouTube, and you know what? That's the only place I make revenue other than iFood TV. iFood TV, I can make revenue, and they actually pay me. YouTube has yet to pay me because I haven't hit the minimum yet, which is kind of funny because, I don't know, anyway, I get a lot of views on iFood.tv or iWine.tv, and they have apps on Roku and blah, blah, blah. So God love you guys that watch me there. I, I think it's freaking phenomenal, and and they are super supportive. Matter of fact, I, I probably I forgot to send uh, my contact there an email going, hey, the Halloween episode's up, so you probably want to feature it now instead of waiting. Um, so after I record, I'll have to send her an email. Um, but anyway, so the long, long little housekeeping there to kind of explain what's going on. Uh, let's get into this product here. So I saw them uh, a few months ago and I thought it was an interesting idea. So for $35 a month, you just automatically pay 35 bucks a month. They automatically send you a box of wine. Well, this is the box. Oh, is it? Yeah, wine box right there. So this is the box of wine. Um, and I'm pretty sure it's always going to be three wines that you're getting. And because um, I know this this box I got in September. I have the October box over there. We're not going to do all six today uh, just because it's six wines. But um, we're going to do these three wines uh, today, and then I'll do the other three in a little bit later. So... Um, it's a nice little box and they're nice little, um, got these three vials. These are six ounces of wine. Actually, I think it's technically 187 milliliters. 
Um, but it's six glasses of wine. Uh, they have a proprietary, well, they say a, oh, it's a proprietary, but they, they use screw, screw cap. And I guess the way they use screw cap, it keeps the wines fresh, which it should. Screw cap's a screw cap. Um, I know you screw cap aficionados, probably not. But in general, for most for our, our purposes, screw cap, all screw caps are effectively equal. Um, but anyway, so it keeps the wine fresh and all that. And um, it's great if you just want a glass of wine or something. And you're basically paying, what, 12-ish bucks? Not even, like 11 whatever per glass. And they can kind of mix and match and, and give you different quality levels. So, I mean, it's a reasonable way to have three different wines for 35 bucks. So, uh, let's get into the first one here. And then in, in the box, you get this little envelope. And uh, this one says, why not wine not happiness guaranteed. Uh, the other one said uh, "hello again," and I didn't know. I don't remember what the little tagline underneath was. And they give you three little uh, cards that tell you so, some basic information about the wines, and they have a little catchy sayings and quotes on the back. So something to have a little fun with. Um, but they'll give you the what the what, where, taste, pair, and learn is what they have on here. And they give you the vintage, the name of the winery. Um, and just like some good information about it. Um, now one thing I would love to see on here, maybe under the learn part, I guess, um, which stuff they have in here is, is, is cool is maybe some histoire, right? Some little history of the winery. Um, it just has to be like a paragraph when it was founded, maybe the person who owns there, the winemaker, or, you know, I don't know, paragraph or two, but at that point, you're starting to run out of room on these things. So you, you probably have to get rid of the little catchy phrases on the back and make it a double-sided thing. All right, so um, uh, we're going to do this one. So boom, I don't know how well you can see that. But it, it, it lists the wine on here. Um, and it has a government warning. It has all the, all the things you need to have on a wine label, like, you know, who's the manufacturer or who's the winery. Who, who makes the wine and the alcohol level and oh it's actually 100 milliliters i'm sorry not 187 187 is a little bit more than than that uh how big it is you know how, how much is in here um and uh, any other things that are required by law so they're on here and um so yeah this is the 2000 yes 2014 domain nieto um when i'm looking it up i thought i was getting domain uh del nero like what <laughs> anyway um so 2014 domain niero uh this is uh niero le ravines uh and is a viognier 2014 uh from the cote de rhone france in condru uh condru is very famous for its viognier and uh i haven't had a lot of condrus honestly you know i like viognier and most of my viognier i've had has been domestic and actually some texas viognier Especially from Pergnalis. So we're going to pour a little bit in there. Okay, then we're going to seal this puppy back up. And I'll end up putting all these into the fridge. But since I'm off tomorrow from work, I plan on drinking all three of these. So put that back in my little box there. Um, so Remy Nieto is the viticulture or whatever. Um, but anyway, so their domain. Um, was created in 1973 and uh, um, in Condru, if I read all this right, uh, in the Northern Rhone. And uh, so they've been around for a little while. Um, they're still family owned from what I, what I still read here. And um, the history of the Condru vineyard was a little, was a little confusing because I think the translation from French to English didn't quite work out the way they were expecting it because it sounds like, you know, it says, uh, they said the vineyard nearly disappeared several times, suffering throughout history from invasions, raids, and phylloxera at the beginning of the 20th century. It became more famous when the Avignon popes strove to reconstruct the vineyard for their greatest greedy pleasure. Well, the Avignon popes weren't doing this in the 20th century. So I'm not really sure what they were trying to say. I think they were trying to put everything into one sentence. Um, but they have 140 hectares of Viognier that is spread over steep hillsides overlooking the Rhone River. 
All right, so let's check it out. Uh, definitely a very aromatic. Um, it should be, supposed to be. You know, a combination of floral and fruit, um, white flowers, but really the fruit's coming through. And I, I would call it more like peaches. Peaches and nectarines. Um, and also a little bit of fuzziness, like the skins. A little bit of the candy, too. And uh, cantaloupe. Cantaloupe rind. But yeah, really pleasant nose. I mean, nose-wise, it's great. Again, with the peaches and the nectarines, um, a touch of orange to it also. Um, a little bit, I want to say maybe gritty. Um, it's not like round and full-bodied and, and creamy. So it's a little bit of acidity to it. Um, I have to pour a little more in here because I'm almost out. Hmm. And a little bit of herbaceousness to it on that. Um, I was a little surprised by that. This is room temperature, so it's a little hotter, even though it's like a th like thirteen percent alcohol. I don't know if it has on here on on the on the little tube it does. Um, I mean, I probably should have this chilled a little bit. I think it was thirteen percent. Yeah, thirteen percent alcohol, um, but really tasty. And like, I cannot wait to drink this a little bit tomorrow. Uh, chill it in a nice glass. And, uh, and check it out. Um, I mean, it's a $10 glass of wine. So basically when you think about this, these, these are, can be upwards of $40 bottles of wine. Um, if you think four glasses per, per, uh, per bottle, um, actually, no, it says a hundred milliliters, right? Well, 750 is, is how much a big bottle is. Yeah, so this is like a seventh of a bottle, not even. So, yeah, I mean, if you think about it, I mean, depending on how they do their pricing, this could be like the equivalent of a $30 bottle of wine, and then one of the other ones could be the equivalent of an $80 bottle of wine. So, but I really like it. It's very tasty. All right, so let's move on to the next wine. So, I like these little cards. Next wine is the Chateau... Le Crostes, I guess. Um, this is also in France. By the way, um, I think all their stuff right now is Old World. Um, I, 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 I think they're trying to get some domestic producers, but this is the this is where they've sourced all their wines. Um, the other ones I, I know are are from Europe somewhere. Uh, anyway, this is a Senso Grenache. Uh, basically, is a rosé. Um, and uh, from the from Provence, and Provence is well known for their rosés. Okay, so um, oh yeah, what was I say on the learn here? Uh, back to the Viognier. Learn Viognier originated in northern Rhone and is notoriously fickle grape to grow. It must be picked at its optimum ripeness, and is most successfully grown in Condru due to its granite rich soils. Um, Tastes as an elegant medium to full body, which it is, uh, displaying delicate notes of fresh fruit and flowers with a great mineral finish. Yeah, I'll take that. That'll work. All right. So uh, this place, uh, it was built, uh, well, the, the, the building, the chateau itself, was built in 1653 by Le Comte de Ramatuel. Uh, and it was used as an olive production estate until 1956. Then after that, uh, since 1984, the property was transformed into a vineyard by Jean Didier. Um, and then after that, they became a winery. 
and the rest of it is just like, well, this year so-and-so did this and blah, 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 blah. Um, let's see. The German family in 1998, Lademacher buys the chateau. And there was something about the second generation, Claire and Felix de Luxembourg, takes over the family vineyard in 2013. So I don't know where the Luxembourg clan came from in the second generation because nowhere else is that, that name mentioned. All right, so a rosé from Cinso and Grenache. And it's not really necessarily, I mean, that's a really pale, pale, pale salmon color. But there's, there's it is a rosé. I would please call it that. Ooh, this is nice. Pleasant. Um, I'd say definitely a um, aromatic, um, moderately moderately uh, aromatic. Strawberries are the to me the primary um, the primary uh, aroma, and maybe raspberry. Almost like a fruit cup. I guess, right? A little bit of floral. And uh, like, you know, like rock type of thing, minerality. Again, probably should be chilled a little bit. Um, it's got that watermelon, strawberry, like, you know, hard candy type uh, flavor to it, but not sweet, right? It is definitely dry. Um, also a little floral to it. Um, maybe even a little cranberry. There's this, it's not, I wouldn't call it a bitterness, but a tartness to it, a tartness to it. Like, remember Harry Mandel, we always did that? Um Anyway, uh, like a little bit of tartness to it. Yeah. Um, not as gritty as the Viognier, but there's there's a, a grip to it and a, uh, an acidic, good acid to it. Um, it's really pleasant. I like it. All right, so what do they say? Learn. Only 300 cases of this rosé are imported to the USA every year. Um, blah, blah, blah. They say this pale. I said it was pale. Uh Provençal Princess wine is crisp and lean with just enough red fruit as its cord carries lively minerality. Raspberry sorbetto. Oh, okay. On the nose, hints of fresh cut citrus, okay? And a crispness from the limestone soils, yada, yada, yada. I mean, it's, it is, crisp is a good way to put it. Um, it's really pleasant. I like it. Like, I want to drink all of it right now, but I'm going to go to sleep. It's like freaking 2.30 in the morning. Got home from work. From the day job. This is my Friday. I'm recording. Oh well, actually, it's not even on a Tuesday anymore. It's really Wednesday morning. But for all intents and purposes, on a Tuesday. Just wanted to say that. Um, so my days off typically are Wednesday, Thursday from the day job. And I was like, screw it, let's let's record it. I got nothing better to do tomorrow other than vote. Which of course this is coming out after November 8th. And that's all I'm gonna say. I voted. Um I'm not getting into all that stuff. But uh, so I'll do that and some other errands tomorrow. But uh, I like this. I, you know, I kind of feel like a, like, like a Johnny Carson. You know who that guy is? No. David Letterman. Oh, he's retired too. Uh, Conan. There you go. Conan O'Brien. I got my little cards and blah, blah, blah. And psh, fling him off. No, I'm not going to do that. Uh, very nice. You know, and, and I don't know how, why, oh, there was the 2013, no, sorry, 2015, by the way, on the vintage of this. Um, hmm. It's very nice. I like the Vienna better, but this is more personal preference. But I love rosés. I love dry rosés from uh, that part of France. All right, so... Um, I would imagine that, you know, it says like this one says 300 cases are exported to the U.S. Somewhere along the line, you might find this wine. Maybe if I do a little more research during the editing, I can find out how much the bottle costs. 
uh, re with the typical retailers, but you know, it's 10 bucks for that vial of ish of 100 milliliters of wine. All right, so let's move on to the last wine. Now this is the 2013, and now it's it's a red wine, so you can kind of see it a little. You, you might even be able to read it. I don't know. The Chateau de la Gardine, um, Chateau Neuf de Pop, Chateau Neuf de Poupie. I don't know. If you've ever seen the, the, the video, there's a, a video. It's like some comedy video trying to say how to pronounce Chateau Neuf de Pop, and it's it's really funny. And they, they do other – I've done like a couple other wine ones, but then just like create – they just do stupid ways to pronounce – all these types of words and phrases have nothing to do with wine, by the way. Um, anyway, so 2013, uh, this is a blend of Grenache, Syrah, Mouvedre, and Muscadin. Um, now, this winery, uh, the building, uh, the winemaking tradition of the Brunel family dates back to the 17th century. Gaston Brunel, a famous negociant, acquired the Chateau de la Gardine in Chateau Neuf de Pop in 1945, um, and now run by his two sons, Patrick and Maxime, with the help of their wives, Eve and Maurice. Yeah, and yada, 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 yada. Uh, 52 hectares of vineyards, or, or the estate spreads over 52 hectares of vineyards, 48 of red and four of white, and 20 hectares of forests. Blah, blah, blah. And uh, they today around seventy percent of the production is exported in about thirty countries. So um, and they have like a special bottle. Uh, they talk about uh, the Gardine bottle. Uh, both original and elegant is the result of a happy coincidence. When he first when he first wanted to expand his cellar while digging in the ground, Gaston Brunel found a mouth blown bottle. He loved it and decided to use. A similar shape for all of his wine. At the beginning, he had to go all the way to Italy to find a glass supplier and that was able to make it since 1964. All of our wines have been bottled in the unique La Gardine shaped bottle. Um, it looks kind of like a regular Chateau Neuf de Pop bottle. So I'm not really, at least the one picture we have of it. Uh, maybe I should look at their list of wines. Yeah, it's a little more squat. It's not like, you know, it, it doesn't come up as high and then taper. It's a longer neck and like that. So something a little bit different. All right, so let's check this out. Because we're already at half an hour. So another two gigabyte file, by the way. All right. Pour a little bit in there. I feel like I'm doing science experiments or something like that. Let's seal that up nice and tight. All right. I think it's a cool idea. Flip that over. Yeah, I didn't really put that much in it because I want to enjoy these wines a little bit later. Ooh. That was a good ooh, by the way. More spicy than anything else. Uh, red fruits. A um, little bit of darker fruits. Let's say more raspberry and maybe a little cranberry. But the um, clove, that's that's the spice I'm really looking for. More than anything else, clove. Uh, a little bit of cedar box. Yeah, really nice nose. Mmm. Mm. Mm. I'm drinking this. I'm drinking this one. Um, and I mean, I'm going to bed here in a little bit. Uh, yeah, there's 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 that that um, uh, earthiness, that dry earth, dustyness uh, to it um, that comes through way more than the fruit. Like the fruit's there, but this is all about the dirt. Um, and it's really that dustiness. It's not, it's not that, it's not burgundy where it's like funk. It's just like that good dirt. I mean, it, I'd almost, I'd almost start going, well, this might be an Italian wine because it's got a lot of that dust and leather component to it. 
but a little bit different. Um, it, it's just tasty. I mean, really. Um, I'm on their regular website here, so I wonder if I can find Generations, Generations, Resto, Chateau de la Garden. I bet you this is it right here. Order in France. So let's see how much it is. Uh, nothing happened. I clicked Order France and it just takes me to the wines. Well, you know. I don't know how much it is. Uh, like I said, hopefully I'll remember to kind of look up maybe the bottle prices of these things. This is tasty. It's got a brambliness to it, like a stemminess. That would take me away from Italy um, for the most part, the most blind tastingness. Um, you know, I don't drink a lot of CDPs. Um, I drink probably more Italian wines than CDP. So this would be one of those things I'm like, going, well, maybe it's an Italian wine, but no, it's not. There's something different about it. Let's take it to let's take it to maybe France, maybe Spain. Okay, and then you got to figure out, well, well, what about all the other uh, markers that can take me to Span uh, sp Spain, sp Spain, Spans, <laughs> Spain or France? Um, but yeah, this the, the when I do blinds with Chateau de Pop, I it's kind of like Malbec for me. I, I in, from South America, I tend to call it everything else but that. I, can, I tend to do the same thing with Chateau de Pop, uh, but I'm getting better at going, you know what, wait a minute, it doesn't quite fit all those, so it's got to be this, right? Um, so yeah, I like this a lot. All right, so we are going to wrap it up. Uh, I spent you know, a good portion of the show talking about all the um, housekeeping stuff. I, you know, I know I kind of glossed over these, but I mean... I think it's a great idea. It's 35 bucks a month, so it's like the equivalent of a nice uh, bottle of wine, but you get th three, not full glasses, but you get three tastes of of uh, some good wine. Guarantee you, this is probably closer to a $60 bottle of wine, and the others are probably closer to like 20 bucks. That's how they probably make the, econ the economics work on it. Um, so, uh, as always, thank you for stopping by. Click the links above. If you're on the website, you know, go to the website. Click the links above to friend me up. Uh, click the links below on the website uh, to check out the three wineries and Vinebox. Um, and check Vinebox. Um, and uh, I was going to say subscribe to me on iTunes. But that's somewhat up in the air right now. But uh, yeah, friend me up. Oh, and hit the donate button over there so I can buy more boxes from Vinebox and other places. I got wine coming from uh, Psalm Select and Underground Cellar to fill up my entire, which I it's not quite full, but it's I got I still got plenty of wine in my, my wine chiller and then my rack. So I got plenty coming up and I'm excited about that. Um, Anyway, we will see everyone again next time.